Rose for Mr. Nolan Bushnell. Okay, Alfred Hitchcock, Charlie Chaplin, Steven Spielberg, and now Nolan Bushnell. I depreciate him a whole lot. Absolutely not. <laughs> the Fellowship is the Academy's ultimate accolade. How does that feel? I'm very gratified. I, uh, I really, really appreciate uh, this award and feel like, uh, you know, that uh, it was a delightful evening. Not it's only the second uh, fellowship that's been given out for video games. You stand next to Will Wright. I, I couldn't agree more that Will Wright is a true master and a innovator par excellence. I've known Will for many years and respected his work, and I, I would feel really honored to be in this company. Now, you were on the, the very frontier of gaming way back in the day. Pong started it all. I think anyone who's worth the salt in when it comes to games knows Pong, has played Pong, has really played Pong. <laughs> how, did the, how did the idea for that game come about? Because it's so obviously so simple, but at the same time, very complex. When I first started thinking about video games, I basically went through and I wrote down every sport that could be there. And, uh, and then one day I happened to go to a demonstration of the Magnavox Odyssey. And they had this game in which the ball was bouncing back and forth. And I didn't think much of the game, but I said, you know, if this were done right, it would be fun. And so I gave that as a job, as a uh, project to Al Alcorn, thinking that it was just going to be thrown away, and because uh, we had a contract at that time to do a driving game, and I, but you know, driving game would be pretty te technically difficult using this technology, and uh, we got playing it, and we made a couple of tweaks that turned what I consider to be a whole hum experience into a spectacular experience, and we were off to the races. Now, the Atari 2600, a classic, classic machine. I, there was one in my youth club when I was about uh, eight years old, nine years old, and we used to literally queue to get a go of it because obviously only two people could play, and that contained Pong and, and the like. Um, how did the idea for that come about? And, and were you amazed by the success, or did you kind of see it coming? I saw it coming, but there, there were some things that we were really surprised about. I mean, I like to talk about my major mess mistakes. We thought that each unit would buy maybe two or three cartridges. And so we had designed eight cartridges and we shipped on the ratio of about three per hardware. Well it turned out the first ones that were sold they bought every cartridge. And so we ended up with about six months in which we had machines with no cartridges when we first launched. Now, how much involvement do you have these days regarding the gaming industry? I'm involved with games, but I always like niches that are different. And so I'm working on social games. And social games are defined as games in which people talk more amongst themselves. So I have a set of restaurants and software that are going into restaurants in which the idea is to have all four people at the table having a good time while playing a game. And, uh, and then I'm, I'm doing some work with some, uh, some microtransaction games online that are pretty interesting. And uh, I, I'm involved in a, a game company that is bringing advertising into casual games, which looks very, very interesting. It's called NeoEdge. And a lot of times when you can get a new economic model, it can buy, uh, you know, enable a whole bunch of new game players, which is really what we want. You want as big and broad a market as you can, and you want them to figure out ways to make money in clever ways. Yeah. And, um, and then, all of a sudden, it supports more game designers, more game players, everybody's happier. Having been there since year dot, what's the biggest change or development? What, what's really galvanized the industry for you? What, what's made it so successful? I think that um, the fact that it's always changing. Entertainment is about change and entertainment is about surprise. We, we all like to be surprised. Not necessarily a lot, but we like to be surprised a little bit. And as long as games can continue to surprise us just a little bit, we will have, a, we will have an audience forever. Now you're obviously a very busy man. Do you still get a chance to play games at all? I play games all the time. 
Glad to hear it. Come on, what are you playing? I'm playing Halo with my sons. Excellent work. I'm playing Rock Band. Okay. And Guitar Hero. I'm, I might add that when I'm playing with my kids, I end up on vocals. <laughs> Just thought you should know that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and one of the problems is, is as you get older, your reflexes just go to crap. <laughs> and so I can only beat them in games where stealth and guile beat reflexes anymore. Well, I think they need to remember that, you know, youth and skill are no match for old age and treachery. Exactly. And, and actually, I've, I've br brought treachery up to a fine art. <laughs> I've, uh, I've actually, you know, played games and my kids said, Dad, you cheated. And I said, I'm teaching you about real life. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because as a kid, it wasn't any good at football. Living in England, it wasn't for computer games, I'd have had nothing to talk about in the playground. So if it wasn't for you, I'd have been, I don't know if I'd have survived socially in school. I think Nolan Bushnell, we bow down. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> Thank there you. There we go.